welcome to Citizens Forum. It is Wednesday, September the 11th, 2019. I'd like to start by thanking the volunteer crew and the Shaw staff. It makes this program happen every couple of weeks. My first guest is Bruce Halser, and we're going to be talking about the upcoming federal election, which you just told me was called yeah. today. It's not upcoming anymore. Yeah, the right. election was called today, and we're in the middle of it now. And we're not going to be talking so much about the actual election, but yeah. more about the processes within it. Sure. You know, there are a whole bunch of different legal rules um, crystallized as of today in terms of how much parties can spend, what kind of activities they can do, um, when they advertise, there are certain rules. And there's also restrictions on third parties, people who, who aren't members of political parties or, or people who don't uh, communicate their ideas through a political party have pretty severe restrictions on their own freedom of speech during elections. So it's important to know about that. Um, people who want to support political parties, there's limits on how much they can donate, who they can donate to. Political parties have limits on how much they can spend. There's a lot of different rules. And uh, at one time in our history, there was a rule that you couldn't publish polls during an election. And uh, now, of course, we see polls published every day. So that also changes the dynamics of elections. There's lots of things, process issues that yeah. uh, make a difference as to how our elections run. Regarding polls, I was thinking about that because you said you wanted to mention it. and. I didn't know, for example, that there was a time in our history when polls weren't allowed to be... Yeah, I, I didn't know that. I know it's a controversial issue. Yeah. At one time it was felt that polls um, would influence voters, uh, not, and that elections should be policy discussions, and people shouldn't be influenced by that sort of thing. You know, in the W.A.C. Bennett era in British Columbia, for example, you couldn't publish polls um, during the writ period. Yeah. And you know, when I think, when I thought about it, I thought, well, yeah, because when the polls are published, it basically tells you who's in and who's out. And especially in this voting system we have, then you've got to strategically vote. You know, you're not voting on policy. You're not voting on anything. But a lot of people are forced to vote, uh, you know, to keep somebody else out. Well, in the is, electoral system we have, it does provide incentives for people to support larger parties and not smaller parties because... You, you don't want to waste your vote by voting for somebody who has no chance, and maybe a person you really don't like gets in and you're riding. So uh, some voters use polls to inform their vote that way, and they've, they will deliberately go and vote for their second or third choice um, because it's more important to them to support somebody with a realistic chance of, of winning than somebody without uh, and fear that they'll get a result they don't want. Yeah. Uh, now. Polls have been notoriously wrong <laughs> There's that in too. the last few years, and sometimes uh, they're not a very good guide, but I think they probably still remain the best guide we have for that sort of thing. In the days when you couldn't report on polls, they uh, reported on the size of people's rallies and other things. To, there's always been horse race journalism yeah. during elections, and people are interested in that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was... Uh, a bit of a blow up several weeks ago when Elections Canada supposedly said, although I don't know what they actually did say, but people had the impression that the issue of climate change could not be talked about by environmental groups or something like that. I mean, I tried to follow it, but I have, I'm completely confused about what actually happened. Well, or what the rules are. The rules are, and it's fairly recently that these rules came in, the rules are that if you're not because political parties um, have limits on how much they can spend. Uh, the thought was we don't want political parties' campaigns to be swamped by third parties, well-heeled well uh, lobby groups and things, outspending the parties during elections. So there are very strict, strong restrictions on what people who aren't candidates or political parties can do during elections, and they can't spend very much money advertising. Each political party, if it's running a full slate of candidates, will spend something just shy of $50 million in the next 40 days on advertising. Um, a third party groups that run national campaigns are restricted to $1 million, about. So, you know, that's a pretty big restriction. And within a constituency, a party will, a candidate will have a limit, depending on the size and population, of between 30,000 and 100,000, roughly. And third-party groups will be limited to, I think, around um, three or four thousand dollars in so, total. In total, 
So, and less in smaller ridings, somewhere between one and four, I think. So, you know, that's a pretty big restriction. And it used to be that you third parties couldn't use, even use their small amount of money to support a party or oppose a party. But recent changes have said you can't even talk about an issue that's associated with a political party. So if one political party is promoting, um, you know, more spending on the military, and and that's a campaign issue for them, it's part of their platform, third party groups that want to support the military or oppose military spending uh, really are restricted. They can write op-ed pieces and letters to the editor and they can hold meetings, but they can't go and buy a bunch of Facebook ads or newspaper ads or television ads more up more than the limit. Can they and put something up on YouTube where there's no money involved? Yes. Uh, okay. Well, they would still have to report that because yeah. even if you even if you put something on YouTube, there's a small cost to that in okay. its advertising. Okay. Um, but the nature of the social media world is that even paid advertising on social media is usually going to be below the limit. So it really restricts them from billboards, television, radio ads, and things. But so as of now, these restrictions are in place. This being September the 11th. And it's not just a spending limit, but you also would have to register. So even if you wanted to have uh, buy ads on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, even if you're going to be under your limit, you would still have to register. If you don't register, that's, that's an offense. And I think that's why Elections Canada wrote to a lot of environmental groups and t to warn them that they're taking that position. Uh, the, that position's a little controversial. Lots of civil libertarians think that that's too broad an interpretation of the act but it hasn't been litigated yet. So if you're a cautious non-political party that wants to uh, get out your message in the next 40 days, you're gonna want to register and you're gonna wanna really limit what kind of uh, public campaigning you do. So with that particular issue of the environmental groups and climate change, what is the actual situation now? Can they advertise? Well, what Elections Canada did is they looked at the party's published statements, platforms, websites. They determined that uh, climate change itself is an issue because while four parties, four national parties um, agree that climate change is an issue and they all have plans for climate change, there is one national party, the People's Party, that uh, denies that uh, so it's both man-made uh, uh, activity is causing global warming so they've said well that's an issue between the parties if the and so they've determined that anybody who's advocating um, that global warming is caused by human activity uh, may be in violation of that okay uh, so the environmental groups can say whatever they want they can do whatever they want they just can't spend money that's right on it okay yeah. what do you think of uh, that particular restriction, just good or bad? I think that it's way bro too broad, personally. Um, I understand why it exists. It, you know, the genesis for it really happened during the 1988 free trade election in Canada, where Brian Mulroney's Conservative government was re-elected in an election that was essentially a referendum on free trade. And there was a fair bit of spending by third-party groups uh, backed by businesses that supported free that. trade. And yeah. so some analysts and academics after that felt that uh, that election had been influenced to some degree by third-party groups and that maybe there should be some restrictions. And there were restrictions brought in in the 1990s to deal with that. Uh, I think those were probably reasonable and we've lived with those for t 20 years, but uh, I think the new restrictions that were, are brought in in many provinces as well are just too far. Uh, it's just my personal opinion, but I think but that... But up till now, it looks like they've been able to spend as much as they want. Uh, unions or uh, oil companies or anything. Well, there have been restrictions for more than 20 years on unions, business associations, 4-H uh, clubs, whatever, getting involved in the campaign and endorsing candidates or opposing candidates. But the recent changes is to say even um, mentioning issues is actually endorsing, a is associating yourself with a candidate. But prior to today, when the election was called, they've sort of been free to, or, or even well, just... Un no, under the, the, the bill that the, liberals, the Trudeau Liberals brought in, 
there's a pre-writ okay. period as, as well, well where okay. there are also restrictions. Okay. Not quite as strict as during the writ that we're into now, but they even had restrictions for the last uh, several months. Um, there have been past reforms on uh, election campaigns and with, I guess, good and bad results. Um, can you, what changes would you like to see? Here we are, election day is starting. What could we do to make the election process better for Canadians? I think that um, while many of the changes that have come in on election financing, on advertising rules have been well intentioned, uh, you know, my biggest problem with them as somebody who has, uh, has acted as legal counsel for political parties and for third parties from time to time is that they've created a real, a huge sense of bureaucracy and a lot of barriers to entry into the political system. It's fine for the Conservative Party or the Liberal Party, big national parties with lots of money, to comply with all these rules and have they have people they pay to fill out all these forms and do everything right. But it's very it's, it creates a real barrier of entry to small parties. The the amount of scrutiny and the amount of filing you have to do is I think in, inordinate to the to the public good in many cases. It's hard if you want to be an independent candidate. You know, in the old days you could just go and get a hundred signatures on a form. And, uh, and file and you could run. And sure, independent candidates don't have a great record of getting elected, but sometimes they make, uh, they make points that become important points, or sometimes people just need to be able to blow off steam, and that's democratic. And I think the administrative burden for people who don't have a big party infrastructure behind them I is tough. I, uh, I, I find it amazing that the People's Party of Canada has a full slate of candidates, considering that they're a new party. I know that... Um, in the past, uh, provincially, the Green Party had trouble fielding candidates, partly because of the administrative burden, and, and others have done the same. And I think we need to balance that. At, at the end of the day, in a democracy, I think we want more voices rather than less. And a lot of these rules uh, shut out uh, marginal voices. And unless you hear those marginal voices, they never have a chance to become mainstream voices. And and. You know, if people don't have a chance to express themselves and feel like they're being heard, that's when you get into dangerous situations like we see in other countries in the world where people go to non-democratic means to express themselves. Uh, I think that the fundamental point of elections and democracy should be to make people feel like they can participate and get a fair hearing. And the more we restrict speech and restrict people's ability to seek office, uh, the more we run into that danger. My concern is that, I mean, I just don't see any democracy, you know, if we want to use the word. Like, for example, I think around 80 to 85 percent of Canadians would like to have genetically modified foods labeled. I think that's the numbers I've seen. It, maybe they're not true. But it doesn't happen. How can some, where 80 percent of us want something, and, and there's not even a discussion or a mention of it anywhere. So it's like our government has just left us behind and they're off in their own world of doing whatever it is they want to do. But is there a connection? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, elections are, are interesting exercises because you're distilling a whole bunch of different views on issues into one vote on one day. Yeah. And although, I, you know, I don't know about your statistic on, on GMOs, but if it's accurate, my guess is that it's not the ballot box question for a lot of people, so it doesn't matter. I mean, politicians seek votes, and when election time comes, they seek votes on the issues that are going to drive voters to the polls. And it may be that a lot of people will casually give the opinion that uh, they'd like to see labeling on genetically modified foods, but it's not an issue that drives them to the ballot box. There's a hundred issues ahead of them that are more important, and even if um, you know, I suspect, Jack, that if Maxime Bernier said, we're going to label GMO foods, and you said, great, I'm glad to see somebody say that, you still wouldn't vote for him because there's a hundred other issues no, I where you don't agree, right? <laughs> GMO food should be labeled in a democracy. Bruce, thank you very much. We're out of time. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and thank you for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.